Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Liberty Park Music for another piano etudes lesson. In the early stages of our piano learning, we do a lot of staying in the same hand position in pieces. Uh, learning to play in positions and thinking about being in positions is a valuable aspect of your beginning piano training, so it's worth it for us to do. However, outside of the world of teaching literature, we very rarely restrict ourselves to staying in a given position just for the sake of it. Now, actually learning to do this and getting comfortable with moving out of these positions is one of the main features that we find in moving away from the beginner's learning and into the more diverse intermediate realm. So, for today's lesson, we're going to look at a piece by Kohler that is going to let us work on this a bit, and as a bonus, is going to give us the opportunity to work on some incorporated scales. So, let's take a look. So, right away you can see the scales and numerous fingering numbers throughout. This piece is a little different than some of the more basic scale featuring pieces that we've seen in the past in that, for the most part, we're not simply playing the standard 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fingering that we use for most basic white note scales in the right hand. Uh, this key or scale signature of one flat tells us, in this case, that we are using the scale of F major, which has a slightly less conventional 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 fingering for the right hand, which I think was a strategic choice by the composer to force the player to think a little more about what they're doing. Otherwise, this piece uses a basic 4-4 four, four time signature, has a tempo marking of moderato, and is a little more diverse in form than your standard 16-bar affair. Other than the repetition markings themselves, which I'm sure you noticed I did skip in the playthrough just for the sake of time, uh, we really don't have any repeated phrases or figures in this piece. It's pretty through composed. Really, this piece is kind of all about the details, so let's jump right into looking at those. Just to get it out of the way, let's point out that the left hand for this first part of the piece is a pretty standard accompaniment of playing broken chords. Um, it's very basic. We do have a little left hand interest happening later in this piece, but for now we're just going to devote all of our energies to the right hand material. So as you can see in the right hand here, we have an F major scale in measure one connected to an arpeggiated or broken um, F major chord in measure two. Now within that, we actually have three position changes. One at the crossover in the middle of the measure here between this four and one fingering, and then again right at the change of the measure between three and one. Now if you play this slowly and stop at each position change, you can see that we start in an F position, move up to a C position, and then again up to an F position. at which point we're actually playing that broken upwards root position F major chord. Now let me demo the whole thing at speed once for you. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.